been decent for hours. Since when did that stop people calling on me at all hours? Hey, what's up with you? You've been taking a course in pelmanism. So Not unless Alan's been slipping it in my tea. Oh, I mean, this time in the morning, you just sort of running around trying to catch yourself coming back. This time in the morning, I've usually got a great big hairy fella to look after, haven't I? Oh, where is Alan? In Leeds, since last night. Silence in this house is definite, deafening. Here, help yourself to some tea. I forgot to make gallons this morning. So. Well, are you going to tell me, or do I have to guess? What? What are you come about? Oh, I just wonder if you could do me a favour. What sort of a favour? Well, I thought I could make a few quid on the side. You know, they Mark Britain catalogues. I wondered if you could get the griff on them when you're going to work like. You mean an agency? Yeah, if you could just find out the ins and outs. Oh, I don't see why not. Oh, sorry. What's Alan doing in Leeds, any road? Well, it's a good question, love. I'll ask him when I ring him up. Oh, wasn't he wrong you? Not as far as I know. Oh. I beg your pardon. Uh, nothing, I just said. Oh. I know what you said. What I'm trying to find out is what you mean by it. Oh, I didn't mean anything, only. Only what? Well, there's some husbands who do ring up and some husbands who don't, and I, and I thought Alan was one of the doers myself. Oh, yeah. You two been having a row with someone? No, we have not had a row, and as far as I know, he's not gone home to see his mother either. Well, well, I didn't mean it. I just thought it was funny that she hadn't wrong you, that's all. Oh, well, as far as I know, he could have been ringing till it was blue in the face. I wasn't here to find out. And if you want to ask me any more personal questions, I'm here for the next two minutes, and then I have to go to work, right? Oh. Hello? Laura? It's Alan. Yes, I can imagine you are. No, I just happen to be in Leeds. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Um, I wondered, um, as I'm in town, whether you and I might not get together. I know, it would have to be today, I'm afraid. Half past three this afternoon, fine. Well, I'm at the Commercial Hotel in Bridge Street. No, no, I'm quite alone. All right, look forward to that. Goodbye. Ernest. I'm sure Sydney and your Edie will be leaving for Barrow sometime today. You don't know Sydney. He's as tenacious as a limp limpet mine and twice as nasty. And our Edie thinks the sun shines out of his bootstraps. But surely they must understand that your situation's quite different now. Well, they understand all right. They won't be happy till they've got the situation back to what it was before. Ha! Huh. What's his Stan and Hilda putting them up like that? I suppose they could think they were doing you a favour. That's a charitable thought, Emily. If the Ogdens put themselves out to that extent, they probably thought they were doing themselves a favour. How? I can't imagine. Ernest, hmm? if you should change your mind about the amount of money you're sending them... I've no intention of it. No, but if you should, well, I just want you to know that whatever you decide will be perfectly all right with me. What have I done to deserve someone like you? Oh, don't worry, Emily. I've made my decision. I'm going to stick to it. And nothing Sydney or our Edie can say will make a blind bit of difference. Shouldn't we go around there now, then, Sydney, and get it over with? Not on your life. I mean, your Ernie knows he's not going back home, doesn't he? And he'll be wondering just what we're going to do next. So let him sweat a bit. And just when he's thinking that we must have opted it back to Barrow, bingo, there we are, right in his pocket. And with a bit of luck, the one with his wallet in it. Uh, there's a table free in there if you'd like to come through. Oh, not for me, thank you. I mean, don't let me stop you, but once I get set down on one of them stools with this back of mine, take a block and tackle to get me up again. He's a martyr to his back, is Sydney. Oh, so's my stand. Oh, well, I'm not surprised if your bed's anything like that one we slept on last night. I mean, no offence, you know, like, but well, I mean, it's got a dip in the middle bigger than the Valley of the Dolls. Funny, we've never had no complaints from us other staying guests, have we, Stan? Not that I know of, no. And it all boils down to what you're used to, doesn't it? I mean, that bed we've got at home cost pounds, didn't it, Sydney? Oh, I am worth every penny of it. Well, you get what you pay for, don't you? We've always thought it was false economy, me and Sid, buying shoddy stuff. Oh, yes. 
Loose ceiling? Not yet, why? Oh, well, will you give her these when she does come in? What's this, then? Oh, it's her future, she hopes. The rotten dog. Oh, what's up? Well, she must have heard me the other night. What about? When I was telling Mrs Walker and Betty that was what I had in mind. Oh, well, you know what they say, little pigs have big ears. Well, there's one little pig round here who's going to get her ears pinned back when I see her. Yeah, well, before you do, give her them, will you? I'll give it her, all right. Straight between the flaming eyes. I hate my belly playing a Warsaw concerto or something this morning. He's used to a very big breakfast at all, Miss Sidney. Oh, yes. Still. We usually only have toast to fill up, finish up with, you know. Not long to dinner time, though, now, eh, Hilda? What's on the menu, then? Steak and chips? Well, of course, uh, me and Stan don't tend to eat in very much during the week. Uh, not with the Rovers being such a handy local convenience, like. Oh, do they do meals in here, then? Ah, uh, steak and kidney pies and raw onion. Oh, dear, I do wish you'd mentioned it earlier. Yeah, then we could have gone down to town and had us a proper meal. Don't you like steak and kidney pie, then? Oh, it don't like me. He has oh. to be very careful what he eats, Lewis Sidney. I mean, it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't have been the same if he'd had his usual proper breakfast. Still, <laughs> when in Rome, eh, Harry? Well, it's your tickle stomach I'm thinking about. I mean, I can eat anything myself, like. Let a pig. So, then it's a pie a piece for the ladies and a couple of pieces for you and me, eh, sir? Ah. And... My treat this time, eh? Oh, well, if you insist. Uh, just come and give me a lift up, yeah, will you, well, Mr? Yeah, excuse me. Bad luck, your colour telly going on the blink so unexpected like that night, just before we got there. Yes, well, they can be very instrumental, these colour tellies, you know. It's through them costing so much money, like. Oh, yes. And wasn't it funny the men coming like that at that time of night to take it away while you were out? Oh, yeah, well, it's a very proficient firm, it's ours, you know, 24-hour service. <laughs> if you'll excuse me, I'll just go and uh, powder my nose. Yeah. Oh, I'll come with you. Oh, just as you like. Nick! I haven't. Have I? What? Oh, blooming well, have you, know? Uh, I've never done that before. What? Left me wallet in me other jacket. I must have done it when I changed this morning. Get yeah, away. Well? What do you think, then? My God, if I told you what I was thinking, I'd probably get my face slapped. Oh, I should watch this fella if I was you, Maggie. I think he's a bit of a wolf on the quiet. Just a normal, healthy lad. Now, where have I heard that before? <laughs> oh, Maggie, I, I forgot to go to the bank and I've left myself a bit short. You couldn't let me have a sub out of the till till Friday. Uh, how much of a sub? Five? Mm, all right. You do know where you're going, I suppose. Oh, I told you. It's jammed. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I told you where I'm going. Leicester. Oh, but whereabouts in Leicester? Oh, I'd uh, better make sure I've got my sister's letter. <laughs> oh, yes, that's right. Well, I'll be off then. Hey, now, don't forget this, will you? <laughs> oh, thanks. I'll uh, see you when I see you, then. Ah, don't do anything I wouldn't do, will you? Councillor Roberts, what are you suggesting? <laughs> Come on, then. What about it? What about what, then? That cup of coffee you promised to make me. If you want a cup of coffee, you know where the jar is. And uh, you can make one for me while you're at it. I'm afraid we'll have to drink it in the shop, though. I can't go deserting the ship, you know, to entertain gentlemen callers. Well, there's a bell on the door, you know. We get plenty of warning. You know, I think you are a bit of a wolf on the sly, off Roberts. No, it's just an ugly rumour I'm spreading to increase my sex appeal. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose uh, you and Sydney will have to be getting back to Barrow pretty soon, then, eh? Oh, there's no rush, Linda. Oh. No, no, we're not leaving Weatherfield till she's got her just desserts from that toffy old brother of hers. Well, you can't let yourself get walked on, can you? Even if it is your own flesh and blood. I mean, he did very well for himself, did Ernest, when my man passed on. Aye, uh, well, our really isn't me thinking about this board and lodging lark, you know, the fact that four people can't live as cheap as two. Eh? Oh, you don't want to worry about that, Stanley. He always pays his corner to Sydney, don't you, though? Oh, aye. Why, you'd see me go short sooner than you do anybody a hapenny, wouldn't you, love? But fair's only fair, isn't it? Yeah. But same again, is it, than oh, everybody else? Yes. Uh, have you got your purse with you, love? Oh, yes, I think so. Uh, will a couple of quid do you? Oh, it should see us through dinner time, eh, Stan, I reckon? Uh, oh, love, I'm sorry. I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed. I must have left it back at the house in me other bag. Hey, I want a word with you, little pig. You are? Elsie Tanner left that for you. Oh, my catalogue. Oh, thanks, Grace. It's uh, just come to you out of the blue, did it, this idea of starting an agency? Uh, yeah, of course. You just didn't happen to overhear me saying that that was what I was thinking of doing. I stopped listening at Keel's when I left Standard One. Listen, clever clogs, you know as well as I do that there's not enough room for two agencies in one street, never mind in one pub. Well, I wouldn't let it worry you. I mean, you could always tech in washing or something, couldn't you? Same again, Betty. 
Oh, smile when you say that stuff. I don't you. feel like flaming smiling. Excuse me, please. Why? What have you done? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> yes. This is the Rover's return, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Are you looking for Mrs Walker? Miss Emily Nugent, actually. She does live here, doesn't she? Oh, yes, that's right, but she's not in at the moment. Oh. She'll be up at Mr Bishop's house in Manor Terrace. He's her intended, you know. So I believe. Yes, you'll catch her if you go round there this afternoon. Manor Terrace. That's right. Mary. Number three, actually. A big, ugly, rambling place, just like a Victorian bush shed. Thank you. Are you thinking of going up there just now, are you, then? I can't quite see what business that is of yours, but yes, I am, actually. Right, well, I'll tell you what business it is. Oh, it is of mine, then. Seated down here is this lady, my wife, Ernie Bishop's sister. And we're on our way up there later today to sort them two out. I see. Well, in that case, it seems I couldn't have arrived at a better time, doesn't it? Couldn't you? I'm Emily Nugent's sister, and if there's any sorting out to be done, I'll make a point of being there myself to see if our Emily needs any help. Having trouble? Oh, hello. I'm afraid I am, yeah. Got the door open with it all right, and I can't get it out. There you are. Let the dog see oh, the rabbit. Tom. Oh, you're right, it is jam. Oh, hey, no. you haven't got a pair of pliers, have you? Yeah, hang on, I'll get them for you. Tom. Having a bit of trouble? Well, your Maggie is. Oh? She's got flipping keys stuck in the door. <laughs> oh, and you just happened to be passing in your shiny white armour, did you? You galloped over to a rescue, right? Well, in my bicycle clips, actually. Oh, do you know, it must be lovely having a fella like you around Alf Roberts. Always ready to do the little odd job for you. Well, you've got your siddle, haven't you? Oh, yes. Then I'm the one he's married to, aren't I? These two? Oh, yes, sir, they're all right. Hey, was that our Betty's voice there just now? That's right. Anything, uh, anything wrong? Not as far as I know, love. Oh. What? Oh. Oh, no. It's not my flaming day, is it? Oh. Ernest! Speak. Come and meet our Nora, my youngest sister. The one I told you about. I'm Stoke on Trent. Oh, hello. Mr. Bishop. Oh, excuse the gear. I've been getting in a bit of practice, you know, in the kitchen sink. Oh, really? Why didn't you let me know you were coming? Well, I wasn't really sure I was until this morning, but then Charles took the kids out for the day, so I thought I'd seize my opportunity and drive <laughs> up from Charles and me. Oh, thanks. Oh, well, thank you. I hope you like it. Charles fired it himself, actually, in his own kiln. Oh, yes. He's in a trade, is he? Well, not exactly. Works in a bank, actually. Pottery is one of his hobbies. Oh, oh Nora, it's lovely. I thought you'd like it. Oh, I do. It's lovely, isn't it, Ernest? Very impressive. Hey, you must get him to give me a few wrinkles. You know, save ourselves a few bob getting our bottom drawer together. It's quite valuable, actually. Oh, yes, yes, I'm sure it is. No, I, what I meant was I, I wish I was that handy. <laughs> a cup of tea all round would be rather appropriate, don't you think? Go on, put the kettle on. I think before you do, there's something you should know about. Oh, I yes. called at the Rover's return on my way here. That's how I knew you, where you were, Emily. Yes. I had the misfortune to run into a certain Mr and Mrs Burgess. I rather oh. got the impression that they were coming up here too this afternoon. I think the phrase was, to sort you out. Oh, Lord, no. Well, I must say, I wouldn't <laughs> let the likes of that lot put the wind up me. Well, as far as I know, nobody's got the wind up, uh, Nora. I think you can safely leave me to deal with my own relatives in my own way, thank well, you. Why don't we have that cup of tea and then I can put Nora in the picture? Well, if you're going to, you better get a move on. My impression was they weren't going to belong after me. Don't worry, love. Hello, Laura. Hello, Alan. So you found it, all right? Yes. I must say, I thought at first the taxi had dropped me at the wrong hotel. Why? Well, this isn't really your usual style, is it? Well, it's clean and convenient. Since when did things like that ever bother you? Oh, ever since the morning, I woke up and found I was over my ears in debt. I'm sorry. Yes, so was I, but uh, I learned to live with it. Things are still bad, then? No, things are fine now. I now have a partnership in a garage at Weatherfield. I'm glad to hear it. Would you like a drink? I just have scotch. Thank you. I couldn't 
we go down to the bar? The bar's closed, Laura. Besides, I think when a man has a rendezvous with his first wife, it's uh, prudent if it's as private as possible, wouldn't you say? <laughs> and how is your current wife? She's fine. But you didn't bring her with you? No. Well, she has a job. She couldn't have got away. Cheers. All the best. Well, <laughs> have you missed being married to me? Well, truthfully? Yes. No. You? Truthfully? Yes. Sometimes. But then you didn't ask me around here to talk about that, did you? No, I didn't. Well? Well, I find myself in Leeds and I realize that I haven't heard from Mark for quite a while. Not since he walked out on me that time. Do you hear about him? Oh, yes, he writes often. Good, well, uh, would you mind putting in the picture about his latest activities? Well, that's about it. Dinner for one, please, James. I'll run away, then. Oh, didn't you know? No, no, I didn't. Funny. I thought you would have done. ta -ra. James, what's that supposed to mean? Elsie seems to be under the impression that I'm trying to pinch her husband off her. Phew, cheeky monkey. Yeah, she but knew. Knew what? Oh, nothing. What can I get you, Betty? Um, I'll have a packet of your frozen green beans. Right. You, um, you managed to get the key out then, did you? Uh, not really. Alf ended up having to put a complete new lock on. Must be nice having the man about the house. Yeah, it must be. Well, depending on whose man it is you've got. Beg your pardon? Oh, come on, Arkid. You know as well as I do what I'm talking about. I don't know. You know, honestly, you'll finish up in hot water, you will. You will. He's got a wife of his own. Look, Betty, Alf Roberts is just a very good friend of mine. That's all. Nothing more and nothing less. You know that and he knows that, but does his wife know that? I mean, people are beginning to talk. If folk have got nothing better to do than make malicious gossip about me and Alf Roberts, then all I can say is, Betty, they must be pretty short of something to talk about. And I can only hope, I'll Betty, you're not one of them. Anything else? No. Thank you. Now, look. This matter is nobody's business but mine and our Edie's. I'm afraid I can't agree with you. If you're going to marry my sister, then any business of yours is her business as well from now on. But none of your business, I shouldn't have thought. Oh, shouldn't you? No, neither would I. Oh, well, that's just too bad, because I just happen to be making it my business. You're too soft, Emily. You always have been. If you weren't, you'd have been married years ago. And a better prospects. Laura. Look, somebody has to say it, Emily, and if you won't, I'm going to. Marriage is a contract. These things have to be sorted out at the beginning. Four pounds a week. It's better than many a pension. Look, missus, all you know about this is what you've been told by who's biased to start off with. He got all their mother's money. We're not asking for anything that ain't due to us. That'll be enough of that. Thank you, Sydney. And don't you, Sydney, me, Ernie Bishop. Nobody in this family knows just how much more than anybody else you got out of that mother of yours. Sydney. You didn't build up that fat little business of yours on Tuppence Haven and Shirt Bunny. It took money to start that lot. And we want our share. That's all we're asking for. Our fair oh, share. Oh, you great no. thing loud. Can you show your face and all, Lady right. Look. That's enough. Out. And don't let me ever see your grasping little faces in my house again. You won't. You heard. Who do you think Look, you're are you are going to? out of here or do I have to yes. chuck you out? And you can do take you her with you too before I do something I'm sorry for. <laughs> good. It's a good thing for you. I'm not a fit man. Out. All right, all right. We're going. Big end. Now look. You oh, Emily. Is that really the family that you're thinking of marrying into? Oh, do shut up, Nora. If you hadn't insisted on interfering, none of this would have happened anyway. You're every bit as bad as they are. Well, if that's all the gratitude I get, I'm going good. Does she know you're seeing me here? Elsie? No. Will you tell her when you get back? Yes, of course I'll tell her. Why not? Mm. Funny, isn't it? What is? The way some marriages work out. Go from strength to strength, really. While others just turn rotten right there in your hand. Yes, I suppose so. Have you thought of getting married again? Oh, I've thought about it, yes. Anyone I know? Several. Yes, I can imagine. 
Still, there were some good times, weren't there? Yes, there were some good times. To the good times, then. To the good times. You're uh, not going back tonight, then? No, a couple of people in Leeds I hope to be able to see in the morning. You could always come round for a meal. Well, I think better not, don't you? No. Goodbye, Alan. We should have talked more. More often, anyway. Yes. But we were much younger then. Come on, Edie, get your skates on. She'll be back any minute. Be as fast as I can. Son, we was just looking for you. Oh, you found me, haven't you? Aye, that quid I owe you for the drinks and the pies. Uh-huh. Thirty bob. Oh, was it thirty bob? Aye. Have you got your purse then, Edie? Eh? Your purse, I said. One. Right. Fifty. Right, now then. What about your board and lodging? Board and lodging? Mm -hmm. Two pieces of burnt toast and a bed with an hole in the middle. Now, don't give me that. You weren't complaining last night when you thought it was for now, were you? Don't suppose you've left out, have you? That quid is all we have between us, and that's the last us till payday. Right, we'll call it straight at that then, shall we? Oh, you robber! Text one to no one, doesn't it? Hey. <laughs> Right, Stan Ogden, I'll take charge of that. Hey, there's 50 bob there. Yeah, well, that's a uh, quid for the stuff I got in for them. Ten bob you nicked out my jam jar last week when you thought I wasn't looking. And a pound you still owe me off that Legion fishing trip you went on. Flipping highwayman. Like you said, Stan, takes one to no one. <laughs> Alan Hard. Oh, yes, please, thank you. Hello, Elsie. Hello, I tried to phone you a moment ago. Uh, yes, I, I thought it might be you. Matter of fact, I tried to phone you first thing this morning. I think I must have just missed you. And last night? Uh, no. I got home rather late last night. I got tied up. Oh, I see. How are you? Fine. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. Uh, things seem to be working out. I've got to see Vine, the accountant, the first thing tomorrow morning. Oh. So you won't be home tonight? Come in. Hello, um, I'm sorry, there's some distort on the line. What was that, love? I said, so you won't be home tonight? Uh, no. No, I'm afraid not. Oh. But I'll phone you first thing in the morning. How's that? First thing? All right. All right. Good night, love. Good night. Well, fancy seeing you here. Fancy? <laughs> <laughs> 